Now, if you're looking or possibly wondering what poker site has the most traffic in players right now and free rolls in tournaments, look no further than Ignition Poker. And this is specifically for the US and Australian market, but Ignition is basically the top spot right now with peak players hitting upwards of 10 at thousand players at peak playing times, meaning the weekends. And, you know, I've been playing on here for over seven years or so and love the software. You know, the tournament selection is great. And of course, my bread and butter is the cash games here. Anyways, instead of just talking about them, I'd like to go over another recent session I played here where you know, I managed to crack pocket aces. It was pretty sick. Of course, if you guys would like to learn more about Ignition, there will be some bonus links you can check out directly below in the description. Don't forget to tap that like and let's get in these hands. Okay, uh, starting things off here with pocket sevens. And, you know, pretty safe board for the most part. The river card actually didn't do anything either. But this guy put in kind of just like a really fast bet, which just smelled bluffy to me. But I don't think I was ever folding here. It was kind of like if he's got an ace, he's got an ace. It is what it is. But I made the call here, and he was just trying to bluff us with uh, absolutely nothing. And it did not work out for him. So, uh kicking things off pretty good. Um, I did make a couple different bluffs in this one that you guys are going to see, and I was very aggressive. You know, every time I play, especially at 200 no limit, you know, these stakes, I tend to be pretty unpredictable. I three bet a lot. Uh, I open raise with hands that you might look at and be like, why are you open raising with that? You know, I just like to mix things up. It helps me, you know, be a little bit more unpredictable at the tables. Um, anyways, just some things to uh, consider maybe to apply to your own game because you know the thing is guys this this might be online poker but you have to be playing the player you know what i'm saying that's just the reality of it and i think the more you think about that you know obviously you want to have your repertoire of you know the the skills that you're going to need to have such as being aggressive you know uh especially with your premium hands three betting but you know you need to put the occasional bluff in there um, and you need to, uh, make uncomfortable plays every once in a while too. So you can't have that ABC poker mindset. You, you really got to open your game up a little bit and, uh, you know, think about what the other player might be holding, which is very important. And that's really a way to excel at this game. Um, you can't just play robotic and just wait for hands. It just doesn't work, especially in today's poker environment. You know, I'm not going to say players are super good, but they are better. So you need to become better at the same time. And, you know, like I said, you're going to see me make some plays in this that uh, for the most part, everything went pretty good except one play. I went for a bluff that just didn't work. And that's how it is sometimes. You know, bluffing, you should be doing about 10% of the hands you, that you're actually in and playing. That's a good range. You could kick that up a little bit uh, as you get more comfortable bluffing. Um, and the same with three betting. I always say this. You should be three betting, you know, about 10% of the time at least when you're in the small and big blind with whatever you're holding. So, you know, I think I put all, basically everything that I talk about, I think you're really going to see in this session. I did a lot of, uh, a lot of what I talk about in previous videos. So yeah, but uh, stick around guys, because you aren't going to want to miss this, you know, all in situation where I uh, cracked pocket aces. It was pretty ridiculous. And, you know, I knew what, I knew what he had too. It was just <clears throat> a very interesting hand. You don't want to miss it. Okay, uh, pocket fours. I definitely, um, definitely went for it on this on this hand, and I'll tell you why. Because when you see the board for pocket fours here, you're gonna be like, you know, okay, I get it. Because you know, I'm I'm ahead of a lot of hands. You know, obviously those ace kings, ace queens. Um, ace jack suited type of hands. Obviously, we're going to be behind a pocket pairs, but at the same time, you know, I went for this play and it worked out. Now I called. I called the three bet. I wasn't going to fold it. Okay, five deuce five. Really, um, like I said, we're going to be ahead of a lot of different hands here. I expected this guy to bet out even if he doesn't have anything, because I would. If I was holding like ace-king or ace-queen or something, I would probably just still bet out into this. Um, <clears throat> and instead of just calling here, I just decided to come over the top, hoping that he doesn't have the pocket pairs. Um, and fortunately for us, he's going to let the clock run for a little bit, which 
was a great sign because if he had aces or kings or even queens here, he's probably just making this call. But the fact that he was thinking about it just told me that he didn't have the goods in this spot. So, you know, this is kind of back to the uncomfortable decisions you have to make. The problem with calling his raise here is that there's just so many cards that are going to hurt us on the turn. Um, you know, really anything, honestly. So I made that play. It worked out for us. But um, yeah, definitely an uncomfortable play that I had to make, but I made it. Our next couple of hands, I raise with low suited connectors. You know, this one, <clears throat> maybe it was just this hand. I, um, did we get three bet here? I can't remember this one. What happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So I went for a bluff on this hand. Check this out. So not a good flop for us, uh, but not terrible because we still have that really low flush draw. Now, the turn card was a deuce. This guy is going to put in a bet here, like 10 bucks, And I decided, you know what? I'm going to try to steal this. I'm going to come over the top. And I kicked it up to like 30 bucks. Now, I was really just hoping he would fold here. If he was on a flush draw too, I guess maybe he would make the call. But really, I was making this play because I wanted him to fold. That was the whole point. Um, so I'm going to kick it up to 30, but I did not expect what is about to happen next. So get ready for this. Now, as soon as he made this play, because <clears throat> he is going to end up coming over the top on me, I just knew. I knew he had probably pocket kings here. Really pocket kings, pocket nines, that is exactly what this smells like. Doesn't smell like smell like ace king. Ace king's probably just going to make this call, but coming over the top, you know, he's got the goods here. So, I had to just fold and it was frustrating cuz <clears throat> I probably could have saved a little bit of money right there not doing that, but it is what it is, guys. Sometimes you go for those plays and they they don't work out, but it's okay. Cuz like I said, you have to you have to be mixing things up. You have to put those bluffs in there, which is exactly why I did that. Okay, on to the really the hand of the session here. 7 6 suited. So I'm going to open this up 5 bucks. We're going to get a 3 bet to I think 18 or 20. And I'm going to make the call here and <laughs> yeah, uh I slowed this one down so I could kind of just break it down for you guys, but seven six suited you know we're still up a little bit of money in the session we started with 200 bucks so we're still up like 50 you know, i decided to make a play with it because like i said suited connectors in cash games especially shorthanded you know you can't make a lot of money with them you could lose a lot of money with them too it just depends on how you play them uh but anyways we flopped a straight here however all hearts you hate to see that i wish the five would have been like a five of spades or you know a club would have been good for us too because it would have given us some flush draw runner runner possibilities but yeah, this hand, um, you know, I do believe we're, we're going to be ahead of a lot of different hands here, you know, especially if he's got a heart. If he's got like ace, king of hearts, pocket queens, he's got the heart, pocket aces, he's got the heart, pocket kings, he's got a heart, you know, he's not going anywhere. And I wouldn't either, especially if I had any of the hands I just talked about. So, um, you know, he's going to make a call here. And we're going to see a turn card, no heart, thank God. The board also didn't pair, which was really good. So instead of just putting in another bet right here, I just went for the shove. Because, like I said, it's going to be a tough spot for him if he's got a pocket pair, which he is going to end up having. And he's going to end up having aces here with the ace of hearts. And it is one of those situations, guys, where how do you get away from it? I, I just, I don't, I don't think you can. So I don't blame him for making this call. This was... Uh, you know, obviously um, a tough spot for him to be in because, you know, I'm just all in right here. And he does have pocket aces with the ace of hearts. We dodged it and uh, we took it down right there, guys. Um, but I think I played that hand to near perfection. I could have put in a huge bet, I guess, uh, on the turn that wasn't an all in. But I wanted to put him in a spot where that he would have to make that decision. And like I said, I can't blame the guy one way or another. I would have done the same thing. I mean, it is what it is, guys. So, yeah, uh, we cracked aces right there for a nice pot, put us in the profit. But we still got a couple more hands to go, so stick around. Also, you know, feel free to comment below about that situation. I just think that, you know, um, 
I think we were probably going to get it all in anyways, regardless. Uh, I, I, I definitely do think that. I think that he might have just made the call, you know, maybe putting me on a bluff um, or missing, I guess, a heart and trying to represent it or something if we would have gone all in on the river after a big turn bet. But regardless, I, I do think the outcome might have been the same. But for us, thank God a heart didn't come, right? And, you know, I just – that's kind of what I put him on. So, you know, you got to put people on, you know – uh ranges of what they might have and that's exactly what I did right there cracked aces feeling pretty darn good about it guys all right we're gonna wrap things up here with Jax this hand was actually kind of funny so uh we got a three bet coming here I think to like twenty dollars obviously we've got pocket jacks so we're gonna make this call all day you can make the argument for four betting it I guess but I just made the call here and we are gonna we are going to spike that jack, man. Ooh, look look out, just a beautiful flop. So uh, board pairing would be great, um, but uh, don't really know where this guy is at in the hand. He could have anything. So I'm just slow playing this. That's exactly my mindset. Not going to do anything. Just, you know, hopefully he bets. But what was really funny here is, check this out. I did this on purpose. I bet $2. And the reason I bet $2 was because I wanted him to come over the top on me. That's what I was looking for. So it was kind of like a uh, like a little teaser bet. Like, why is this guy betting $2 after he called my $22 raise? That's why I was doing it. He just called, unfortunately. Turn card, put a queen out there. Not the card we wanted to see. Um, and, you know, uh, still looking for the board to pair. But I had to put in a bet here to build this pot to protect my hand, too. Because we don't want to see another diamond either with the jack. We really want the board to pair here. That's really what we want. Or just a blank, maybe like a six of, you know, hearts, I guess, on the river, something like that. Uh, but he's going to make the call here, and we are going to see the river card, which is going to be, unfortunately, a diamond, which really just killed the action. I just had to check this one. We are going to end up winning it, but still, it was... Uh, kind of frustrating. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this session. Uh, like I said, you can definitely get on our newsletter if you haven't. We got some good stuff there. One email a week for it directly below in the description. If you made it to the end, didn't tap that like, please do it now. Subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you all in the next poker video.